Hi, my name's Eleanor and I'm going to do a short talk on how to hibernate a tortoise. Okay, so I run workshops on tortoise husbandry and a lot of people are very worried about hibernation when they first buy a tortoise and you really don't have to be. It's a really important part of, of owning a tortoise and it can be very scary but it's worth having a go. Uh, when you first start with a pet uh, I always say it's a bit like when you learn to drive, it's so scary when you first start, there's so much to think about, but actually once you've done it a couple of times it's so easy and you go, oh why was I worried in the first place. So, um, first thing to think about is what type of tortoise have you got. If you're not absolutely certain what type of tortoise it is, you need to find out. Uh, there's hundreds of different types of tortoise in the world and they all come from different parts of the world and that will directly affect how long your tortoise hibernates for. Now, as a general rule, uh, there are a smaller group of tortoises which are more readily available, particularly in the UK, which is where I'm based, and this little Hermans is a perfect example. You get Hermans, Horsefields and Spur Thighs uh, as uh, sort of commonly found pets. So today we're going to uh, use little Ralph as an example. Ralph is about two and a half years old and he's been hibernated every year since uh, he was born and that included the first year at three months. He didn't go to Hawaii in the first year, but what we did do is, like you would with, with a young plant, you want to condition them and harden them off to be used to hibernating, okay? So in the first year, Ralph would have had just sort of a two to three week hibernation, depending on if he was born in early spring or, uh, or, or sort of later in the year. Uh, and then now, um, a few years on, that's been added to, and he's probably gonna hibernate for about four to six weeks this winter okay so why is it important to hibernate him the reason why it's important is tortoises are very in tune with their natural environment they browse um, natural ideally browse lots of natural weeds and flowers in the in, in the wild and in captivity and they have been programmed to have a winter cooling so at the very least you shouldn't keep your tortoise at a constant temperature all year round. You should let your tortoise get a bit cooler for two or three months of the year at the very least. Um, and we really do encourage people uh, to actually let your tortoise sleep for a very short time. Um, I think people are associate hibernation with the risk of losing their pet. And the reason is lots of tortoises did used to die in hibernation. The reality is the reason why that happened is because people didn't understand what hibernation was about and how to do it safely. We now need now know that feeding lettuce, tomato and cucumber is only good for fluids. It's got no nutritional value. We now know that we feed we need to feed we, a variety of weeds and flowers to give a healthy diet, as well as a good vitamin supplement and a good quality UV. So that would then produce a healthy animal. Okay, so that was one reason why tortoises used to die. Um, another reason is people would not hibernate their tortoise in correct environment so they would just put it in the cupboard in the kitchen and it wouldn't be cold enough. The tortoise needs to have its body temperature lowered to ideally around five degrees in order to hibernate properly. Uh, the other thing is people didn't monitor the temperatures so the tortoise got too cold or too hot um, in which case it woke up or got too cold and, and actually caused damage to the tortoise. Uh, or it had an unwanted visitor like a mouse or a rat visiting it. All things that can be prevented. Okay, So it's important, going back to important, because tortoises function better, in my personal opinion and experience. I've kept tortoises for over 15 years and I hibernate all my healthy tortoises. Um, I think that they it really confuses their body clock if you keep them at the same temperature all year round and if you really are scared of actually going the whole hog with hibernation um, please consider not keeping your lamp on for 12 hours a day cut it right down to maybe eight hours so this was having an eight hour day and then if you've gone that far try and be a bit braver and actually turn off the temperature um, to, to cut, keep shaving off the hours over a two three week period um, and actually give your tortoise um, a fasting period with no um, with no food and actually let that tortoise then sleep just for even if it's just five days the first year until you build up your confidence that's better than nothing 
Okay, so how long? I've drifted into to how long you should hibernate your tortoise for. So, uh, with modern research, we now know that you shouldn't hibernate your tortoise for longer than three months if it's a healthy adult. If it's a young tortoise or an elderly tortoise, uh, the general recommendation is to do four to six weeks after you've after the first couple of years. Maybe the first year you might just want to do just a week or two weeks if you're a bit anxious and the tortoise is ever so small. It's like sort of five centimetres long. Um, the only exception of not hibernating would be is if you have a tropical tortoise that wouldn't hibernate in the wild or if you have a poorly tortoise and if you're ever in any doubt you should always consult a knowledgeable vet Okay, in all cases. So, Ralph is going in how do I prepare? That is the question. Ralph has spent much of the summer outside in a secure outdoor enclosure which is self-facing, exploring and eating and grazing. Unfortunately in the UK it's not as nice as where he comes from, south of France, Spain, and uh, he's now trying to go to sleep a little bit earlier than he should. Now because of that we've brought him into uh, the greenhouse here which is insulated with UV proof bubble wrap to help hold the temperature at night time and he's got a secure plastic tray where he's kept by secure away from other tortoises uh, this is around two foot by four foot maybe a bit more um, and we've got a deep substrate of sand and soil okay and Ralph has been in here for probably about four weeks now um, so give it another three weeks of feeding bits and pieces he's already starting to be a bit quieter we're already down to a, an eight hour day on the lamp so he's active but maybe not in top gear like he would be in in the height of summer um, he's now maybe in third gear um, give it another month and um, due to his size uh, he will probably only need two to three weeks to clear his gut um, in order to go into a safe hibernation so we will take um, food away and he'll be even cooler. We may even go down to a six hour day. Um, he'll be getting regular warm baths two or three times a week to keep him hydrated, uh, to keep him, uh, to en encourage him to, to actually pass anything that's in his gut. The reason why we don't want anything in his gut is so that um, nothing's actually going to rot in his gut when he's hibernating uh, and that, that can be another thing that, 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 that can make your tortoise unwell. Uh, when it's sleeping so hydration and an empty gut so at the moment the lamp's on but as we get closer say uh, towards uh, December for Ralph uh, we would in the week before we would bath him every day in tepid warm water probably about 30 degrees C up to about here he needs to cover his nose and his mouth to drink and you need to leave him in 15 to 20 minutes we would turn off his lamp for on his last day. We'd give him a bath the day before and then we'd leave him quietly to actually cool down to, to room temperature um, the day before so he's nice and quiet. We'd carefully lift him out. We would have already done a visual check to make sure that um, there's no swellings or limbs or discharge from his nose. And that his eyes look well hydrated and aren't sunk in. Okay, he will probably be a little bit more still than this. He's still a little bit warm because obviously we're just do, doing um, a demonstration today. But what a lot of people don't realise is when a tortoise is hibernating, its limbs will still be out of its shell and sometimes even its head. And if you gently touch it, the tortoise will move. And you can actually do that every day if you're worried. You can actually touch the tortoise and just make sure it just moves a little bit. As long as it stays cool, you're not going to be. Um, causing any trouble. Okay, so I'm just going to bring you over to a hibernation box I prepared earlier. Uh, you can pick up polystyrene insulated boxes quite easily from a greengrocer normally. Um, they normally get their broccoli delivered uh, in these. If you need, this is a perfect size for Ralph. He sits on the palm of my hand here. But if you need a larger box, you can normally go to a fishmonger's or an aquatic shop and they can normally supply you with a larger uh, insulated box. Now, like Blue Peter, you need to punch holes in your box so that you've got good air movement. Although tortoises 
don't breathe as much when they slow down their, their heart rate when they're cooler. You still need good ventilation. Okay, tortoises do breathe, and in the early years, tortoises often used to suffocate because they were packed too tightly. So, having good air holes is important. Also, label your box so you know it's the right way up to make sure it doesn't get thrown away. Okay, tortoise sleeping inside, do not throw away. Now, if we look inside the box, what we've got is you can use polystyrene beads and shredded paper on the outside and you want to create mass around a smaller box which is just a little bit bigger than the tortoise itself. I tend to use something like dried leaves actually around the tortoise because it's not going to tangle up, it's not dusty and it's nice and soft for them to burrow into and sleep in. Okay, so we're just going to put Ralph in there. Another thing which you can buy inexpensively is a temperature probe which you'll pop inside the box. You can tape it to the side of the box. You don't want to tape it on the tortoise because you don't want the tortoise to, they will move around a little bit and you don't want them to get tangled up in the wire. So tape it on the side. Okay. And then what we would do is close the box gently but loosely so the tortoise is inside. Sorry Ralph, we will get you out again in a bit. Okay, and we'll have the temperature probe on the outside. Okay, and then the little box is suspended inside the larger box. Okay, and then we'd put more shredded paper on top and we would close the lid. Now, the principle of this is that if there's a sudden drop in temperature at night time, the mass that you've created around the tortoise will help keep the temperature more constant. And it's been proven that the more constant you can keep your tortoise in hibernation, the less body weight will lose, the less stress it will incur and it will have a safer hibernation. So wherever you're putting this box you are responsible for whether it's going to stay cold enough, okay? So you have to be very careful about where you choose. If it's a wooden shed it might get too hot, so brick sheds are much better. If you put it in the loft with modern insulation it can freeze or if it's south facing it can get too hot, okay? So you have to be so, so careful about where you choose. Um, it to, and it is very difficult in, with modern housing as well because of insulation. So uh, some people don't ha aren't lucky enough to have a, a brick garage. So a lot of people will actually choose a fridge hibernation as an, al as an alternative because a good quality fridge will stay at five degrees. Okay, so uh, now that's looking at another process which I won't go into now, um, I'll do that separately, uh, but if you want to know more about fridge hibernation I recommend looking at the hibernation care sheet that tortoiseclub.org have, that will cover everything I've talked about in this video as well as how to fridge hibernate a tortoise um, if you decide this, this is a better method for you. Um, so, but we'll just finish with the traditional method. So. You, at a glance, you'll know what temperature the tortoise is inside the box. And I brought one of these out just to show you. If you can afford it, buying a maximum thermometer as a beginner can be really reassuring. You can put the probe in. It's the same principle as, as a basic temperature probe. But what's wonderful about it is it'll tell you the humidity and it will also tell you the temperature of the tortoise over a 12-hour period. So you can check with a button to see the maximum and the minimum a temperature has been over a 12 hour period and you can keep a record in your book the first year uh, and, and that is uh, a really great tool and you can buy them in Maplins or online say on eBay uh, for about £10 and I'd really recommend buying one of those if, if you're um, hibernating this year. Uh, if you have any questions uh, please feel, to, feel free to message um, the only thing that I want to mention just quickly is what to do when they wake up. So you put your tortoise into a cold room that's been 5 degrees C, you can check them every day. I would say an absolute minimum you would have been checking that tortoise once a week because opening the lid is very good um, for putting in fresh oxygen for your tortoise. You can open up your box. Okay. Now. Your tortoise will wake up naturally if you bring your tortoise into a heated room 
the day before you want your tortoise to wake up and then let that gently ri raise in body temperature um, over a 12 hour period. Um, gently lift your tortoise out, it'll probably have its eyes open, be looking at you. Again, you want to do a visual check. Gently check its mouth. He's going to let me. No, he's not. I'll do another time. But um, what you want to do is get that tortoise um, into a warm bath. Again, your normal routine, 15 to 20 minutes. And then under a heat lamp and some food in front of the tortoise immediately. Uh, most tortoises will start to feed straight away. Uh, if there's any problems at all, um, then obviously you need to call your vet or contact a, a knowledgeable uh, tortoise keeper for some support. Uh, but as a general rule, they're normally pretty good at, uh, at um, coming back round. If they haven't, sort of within seven to ten days, started feeding, you might want to just try and coax them um, with something very watery. Um, like a, a little bit of mixed salad or, or cucumber just to, just to get the taste. And once they get the first bite, they'll then go on to more healthy things like weeds and flowers. Right, so I think that's everything for today. Um, keep your records. Don't forget to check your temperatures and um, general health of your tortoise. Measure it. Keep, keep records throughout the year because that will help you get build your confidence and get to know your animal. And uh, happy tortoise keeping. <laughs>